Hi, I am a caregiver at a place called Little Baby Boo Nursery, and we're located in Los Angeles County, and we are an age play facility. So we have people come in and do therapeutic forms of age regression. We typically do frequently asked questions for folks in the community, but more recently we've been getting questions from parents and also from spouses and partners of folks in the community. Today I wanted to take the opportunity to do some for parents because we have been getting a lot of questions from parents. You know, I found diapers, what the heck do I do? If you are going by your teen's room or going in looking for something, you know, or giving, you know, doing whatever, you find diapers, adult diapers in your teen's room, take a deep breath. Everything is cool. Everything is fine. Please, please remember that this is your child and this is the same person that you diapered. <laughs> this is the same kid that you've known, you know, the their entire lives and they're not suddenly some strange weird well I mean they're going through their teens obviously there's some strange weirdos but you know what I mean what you have discovered is absolutely awesome because your child has found a way to cope a very very healthy coping strategy for dealing with all kinds of things there are a couple of fallacies that we need to get through right away. Number one, the first fallacy that people think when they found, find out that someone is an adult baby, really that nomenclature is kind of going out. It's now people are calling themselves littles. The number one fallacy is that they think that they're, it's somehow related to pedophilia. It is not. So do not be concerned that that is the issue. There's a caveat, unless you're finding that your child is looking at children, that is something completely different so that is not a part of what the ABDL community is about. Littles want to be children. They don't, they aren't into children. So your child is not into children. Um, your child just wants to go back to that very um, simple time when they were being cared for. They don't have to think about anything, you know, too crazy or too much, you know, taking on too much responsibility. I would say act be really thankful that your child is using um, diapers as a form of coping because your child could be doing really horrible things. I mean, where most people are using like alcohol or drugs to cope with normal life, um, folks in the community are using diapers and little's clothing and cute things to be able to separate themselves from the stress of of life. Now, that being said, you're going to be thinking to yourself is, you know, are they some sort of pervert? What we normally deal with at the nursery is the non-sexual therapeutic aspects of age play and age regression. So that's what we tend to look at. But there is that other facet of the sexual um, age play. And that doesn't, again, that doesn't have anything to do with pedophilia, just is something that's like, you know, a kink. And that's absolutely fine, of course, because your kid is getting older and, you know, they're going to be into some weird fun stuff. And, you know, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. I mean, but don't automatically assume that that's like some sort of weird fetish or kink kink thing. And a lot of what you're going to find though, unfortunately, online when you're doing searches for, you know, I found diapers in my in my kids' room, what do I do? Um, you're going to find that people are thinking that it's just a kink, um, it, that ABDL is a kink. And that is, that's not true. Most people who are, who we deal with, um, use it as, use wearing diapers and being cute and little as a way to like I said before, just to just kind of relax. Um, so this is actually a very good thing. So congratulations, you've actually raised a really, really cool kid because it's sort of like when, when you have little infants and they're able to kind of self-soothe, that's kind of what they're doing is going to that state of just like when they're cute, everything is like sweet and, and cool. They're not like going out back and, you know, doing drugs. <laughs> But there's still a lot of shame in it. So, you know, they're probably going to be hiding things and they're not going to know necessarily. They're not going to have all of the information either about what they are into or what makes them feel happy. And another thing is um, 
that you should know now is that this isn't something that's going to go away. It's not a fad. It's not something that um, you can talk them out of or that you should talk them out of because I, I mean, we've heard time and time and time and time again um, that people have tried to what they go, they go through these um, binging purging um, cycles where they just feel terrible about themselves and they just give everything away that they've been slowly c collecting and and they're saying oh I'm, I'm never gonna do this again but they inevitably do because it's something that works for them I mean you think of of something that makes you feel okay in this world if you're having a stressful day at work or whatever and you come home and you find something that relaxes you whether whatever it is it could be you know what typically people do is having like a drink or whatever I don't know anything watching TV whatever this just happens to be something that your child is interested in and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and you can go to really any therapist who's worth their salt can, will tell you the same thing and I absolutely if you were having any issues and feeling like you've you've somehow done something to bring this on and that you're a horrible person I highly highly suggest that you see a therapist if you're having any sort of grief yourself also that being said feel free to we do um, what we call virtual sessions and they're typically for age players but we also are absolutely willing to talk to parents and to spouses and to anyone who just needs to talk or someone to talk to either about like age play you know anything under the sun we're really really good at just listening we're caregivers um so that means that we are just really here to talk to people to help people feel safe and comfortable and that's you know that runs the gamut of anything so that leads to the next question which is have I done something wrong to create this, to, you know, break my child or whatever? No, you haven't. I think that this is something, age play um, is something that actually people aren't understanding is as popular as it really is. I can tell you that we've seen folks from across like all different socioeconomic statuses to everything. It runs across everything. People who are you know, blue collar workers to deans of colleges and actors and CEOs. It runs through everything. So please don't think that there's something wrong with your child or that you've done something. That is not the case. But of course, I think a lot of parents, um, your number one fear isn't necessarily that you are looking at them and thinking that they're sick. You don't want them to encounter anything bad in this world because people are a lot of people are terrible <laughs> you don't want people other people to be judging your child because you know how wonderful your child is and how awesome they are so really keep that in mind I think if you ever decide to talk to your child about it that is really up to you I think that that is going to be pretty much a case-by-case -case basis this leads to the third question which is like now what now what do I do once I found this well this is really gonna depend on your relationship with your child. It's really difficult to give any sort of advice on what to do now at this point. I think that, like I mentioned before, if you are really concerned, just concerned for your child, it is absolutely okay to see a therapist. And I've talked to people who have talked to their children after they found, found diapers. It's really kind of come out pretty cool. Imagine being young and having something that is makes you feel very happy and not understanding it. I mean, how awesome it would have been for your parents to just be like, okay, let's figure this out together. Or, you know, you need your own time or whatever, but I support you. Understand that there's nothing wrong with you, that this is cool. This is a way of coping with stuff. There is something though that I should mention because a lot of folks in our community or the people that come to us are, they are survivors of abuse. So there is, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. So going in to talk to your child, be aware that there could be, this could be a way of them um, coping with something that may have happened to them as a child. It could also be an issue that they have when they were growing up with you and or your spouse also. So sometimes it's it can be because of emotional abuse, 
physical abuse. It can also be trauma related in terms of PTSD. So if, I mean, we see this happening a lot later, like there are a lot of people in the military that end up being age regressors. So I know that you may have been coming here to try and find a quick fix or a quick answer or something. And it, this may not have been what you wanted to hear, um, <laughs> you know, because it's so, there are so many facets to all of this that we're learning. I think the, the most important thing to get out of this video is that your kid is still the same awesome kid that you raised. Just be compassionate and be open and come from a place of love because they can feel it when you're coming from a place of love instead of coming from a place of like fear or blame. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, if you need to reach out, please reach out. I wish you luck, sending you love and light. Have a great day.